Greetings, I'm Caffeine Rage, and I'm back with the Sunday Sampler. This week, we're going to be taking a quick look at The Inner World, The Last Wind Monk. This is a point-and-click adventure game by Studio Fitzbang and published by Hit Up Games and Calypso Digital. And as per usual, this is a review copy, but that one is a little bit more apparent this time around because I'm also having to deal with an embargo, and I'm releasing this video a few days before the game releases, so there you go. This is a sequel to the first game, The the Inner World. I mean, it's kind of there in the title. And I will say that, yes, playing the first game does offer a lot more context, but it's not really a requirement for this game. If you want to just jump right in, it does have a pretty good catch up on all the story or the broad strokes of the story for the first five to ten minutes of the game for this one. So it's not really a requirement, but it does offer a little bit more info. So we are going to dive in. I'm about three ish hours into the game and I'm into the third chapter of what I believe is six or seven. Unfortunately, I don't really have a lot of info on the game link and I'm only really going at, out of uh, just info off the game achievements. And unfortunately, because this is a pre-release copy, all the achievements are not in place, or I should say, not visible to me. So I can see up to chapter six has chapter uh, has achievements for it. So I'm ballparking, I'm about halfway, or if not close to it, which is good enough for my assessment of this game for a, just a, uh, well, a quick look. So I'm just going to jump right in. I will try to avoid spoilers, but I'm not making any promises with that because, well, story-based game, but there's not going to be a lot of story spoilers, I hope, in this. And this is The Inner World, The Last Wind Monk. I have to say that it has a very vivid art style. I really like it. It has, and it also has kind of a surrealist, very dry humor. And this is our main character over here, Robert, or at least one of them, one of three, actually. Where is the other one? Uh, oh, there he is. That is Peck, uh, sort of the secondary uh, prime main character. There's people on the ceiling here. Hmm. I didn't uh, notice that before when I got to this place. They've gone all Lionel Richie. <laughs> and there's also a third character that was introduced in the second chapter, which she had really no kind of introduction outside of her situation. I don't want to spoil exactly what that is. And she had kind of the, just the lack of background. I'm sure that eventually makes all, uh, makes a lot more sense, but you know, at the very beginning of things, it doesn't really. So, uh, Peck could fly around and you could see there's, a, this is a very accessible point and click adventure. In that it shows you exactly what is clickable, such as Robert, the ketchup dispenser, the tension spring, that sort of thing. But it also has a very useful help system. I won't go into this just yet, but it's a, well, it's a help slash hint system because it goes a very broad strokes. But as you continue clicking through it, as a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and do that. If Robert's currently upside down, you'll uh, take the exit label upstairs. And as you click through, you know, a grand, I've just got into this chapter, so I don't have a lot of stuff I can look at, but as you click through, it gets more and more specific until it flat out tells you the answer. And for some things, it's more required than others. There's a couple puzzles that are more logic based or more character based, and this is a very character driven game in that you're going to spend a lot more time than you may expect going through dialogue and that's both a strength and a weakness of this game in that the characters are a matter of fact let's switch back to robert and we'll do a little bit of dialogue so let's talk to the traveler hi i'm robert your seat looks really comfortable oh hello robert i'm mr son you smell good. Your scent reminds me of my dog, Charleston. It's like a mix of, of forest and 
fear. Hmm, that reminds me of my home. Come a bit closer, let me smell you. Um, no. Um, don't know if that's such a good idea. Oh, come now, Robert. Just a little sniff. A little piece bad of touch, cold. bad touch. Good old Mr. Sun. What are you doing here, anyway? What I'm doing? Oh, uh, uh, I'm supposed to bring my friend Harold here to Wellington. But my cable car has been delayed for three years now. I repaired the cable car to Wellington. Well, sort of. Oh, damn. Now I have to travel again. I hate my job. I just want to go home. So there's a little bit of dialogue and... Smell you and later. <laughs> Smell you later. Uh, how fitting. It's packed up and ready to... Uh, because this is a more character-driven game, you're going to spend a lot of time in... Well, dialogue with the various characters. And also, often I found myself trying to figure out, you know, how to get Robert to do a particular thing. And particularly Robert, I should say, because he's a little naive. Uh, but that's background and, uh, well, backstory, which I don't really want to get into here. It makes a, a lot more sense if you played the first game or about the first well, 15 minutes of this one. But in order to get Robert to do some things, he may have to go back and talk to a particular person and click through more dialogue options, which you saw at the bottom here. And that could be a little frustrating if it's obvious for the player what to do, but Robert can't see it because of that. And also, at the beginning of Chapter 2, there was a dialogue sequence that I had to go through the same options over and over again to kind of figure out what's going on and to do the puzzle. And it was a little tiresome to do that because it was the same dialogue over and over again. I was just uh, constantly clicking through towards the end because it was, well, being repetitive. Not a good sign for the beginning of the second chapter, but eh, it overall it worked out in my personal opinion. We also got a bit of a taste of the kind of the surrealist dry humor, and let's just kind of look around and let's open up the first aid kit. Oh, that could be useful. Robert's uh, stealing a syringe from the medical kit. Huh. Mmm, that smells like lamb. So can we? Oh, yes, we can. The syringe is filled with puddle water. I'm sure this makes sense a lot uh, later because, well, the game, when it's not forcing you to go through uh, dialogue, it has a lot more logical puzzles uh, than most point and clicks I've encountered. I should say the more obscure point and clicks I've encountered where, well, uh, there's this thing called moon logic in point and click adventures where... You know, it's used rubber chicken on bad guy and, you know, it causes something wacky to happen. That sort of thing. And this, I haven't really encountered it in the first two chapters. To a major degree. It all made sense in the game world and it didn't seem completely out of left field. Like, if we talk to the uh, this guy up here, I'm sure that this would make sense in the long run. A ketchup dispenser and workout machine all in one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a certain logic that it's easy to understand for the most part. I have hit a couple of uh, dead ends, but that's where the help system has been very useful in that. And that is really about it. I don't want to go too much into the story here because I'm about at the halfway point and it's starting to get to the point where, you know, things are happening. So, uh, let's head upstairs. Let's go all Lionel Richie. See if... <laughs> oh, this is pretty confusing. <laughs> but yeah, very Stop. surreal. Uh oh. I'd like to go to Old Aspia. All right. If you could just show me your nose, please. Um. Um. I, I mean, 
Let's just say that I'd like to go to old Aspie. Like, hypothetically? You don't have to insult me. But if you want to go to old Aspia, then the first thing you'll need is a ticket. And there has to be enough room for you in the cable car. And, of course, you'd have to check your feathered friend there as cargo. Can you just walk? transport cage. So, yeah, that, this is the setup for really all the pu puzzle elements of the chapter. Okay, then. And that's usually how things have broken down, is that you'll have an overall goal and subparts to that goal. And if we go here, yeah, you can see how it's broken down now. So, you know, get uh, Robert past the nose patrol. And if I continue clicking through, it gets more and more detailed until it flat out tells me exactly what it does. And that's what, uh, how the game has gone so far in the past two chapters and how it continues to go in the third. Experience? That sounds romantic. The Again. removal of signs and posters, I'm sure no one will know. Oh. And there we go. Uh, more bits and pieces, and eventually Robert will get out of here and figure out how to continue on his adventure. But I think that pretty much wraps things up. A very short Sunday sampler, but really not a lot to talk about. I will say that the humor and uh, kind of the dry wit is definitely not for everyone, and particularly... Robert's persona may not be for everyone. It's he's very wishy-washy. So it may be a little tiresome for people. To Wollington. And well if you've enjoyed the first game, I think you would enjoy this screen. I didn't play the first game, so but it seems to be a good continuation of the story from everything that I could tell from just the media out there. But I think that pretty much wraps us up. As always, constructive feedback is greatly appreciated either in the comments below or if you don't really have anything to say, but want to let me know that you've enjoyed or hated this, hit the appropriate buttons and subscribe if you want to see more of the Sunday Sampler or my other content. Thanks for watching and we'll be sampling something next week and hopefully I'll be on Sunday as per usual, but We'll see if embargoes make any full, more foolish changes to my release schedule. Well, we'll have to see then. I'll see you well, next time.